SHRMCP, SHRMSCP, Practice Prep, Part 6, by Human Resource Prep. According to Title 7 of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which of the following employers would be legally allowed to refuse employment to an individual based on race, religion, or sex? A. A federal agency with 65 employees. B. A dental office with 25 employees. C. A food kiosk with 10 employees. D. A clothing store with 100 employees. The answer is C. Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, bars discrimination, on the part of most employers, including all public or private employers of 15, or more persons. It also covers all private and public educational institutions, the federal government, and state and local governments. The food kiosk has fewer than 15 employees, and can legally be allowed to refuse employment, based on race, religion, sex, or national origin. The Decanta Multinational Corporation practices an ethnocentric international business strategy. However, several global trends may necessitate a change in the corporation's strategy. Which of the following global trends has been marked by an increase in foreign direct investments and reverse innovations? A. An upsurge in the economic power of developed economies. B. A change in influence from developed economies to emerging economies. C. The vast importance of technology over geography and population. D. The impact of a global pandemic and recession. The answer is B. Increases in FDIs and reverse innovations, or trickle-up innovation, are indicative of a shift in influence from developed economies to emerging economies. FDI inflow into developing economies now exceeds its flow into developed economies. Reverse innovations are innovations that start in emerging economies and spread to developed economies. Term to note. Demographic dichotomy means the workforce in emerging economies is becoming disproportionately young, while the workforce in developed economies is rapidly aging. What is reverse innovation? Historically, Multinational companies developed new products in the developed countries, and sold it to emerging economies. Reverse innovation is doing just the opposite. It develops the products in the emerging markets, developing world, and sells it to the developed world. Examples of Reverse Innovation GE Healthcare is now selling an ultra-portable electrocardiograph machine in the U.S at an 80% markdown for similar products. The machine was originally built for doctors, in rural areas of India, and China. Nestle learned that it could sell its low-cost, low-fat dried noodles, Maggi, originally created for rural India, and position the same product, as a healthy alternative in Australia, and New Zealand. Procter & Gamble found that a honey-based cold remedy, Vicks Honey Cough, created for Mexico, also had a profitable market, in Europe and USA. Have you subscribed to this channel? Please do. Would you like to see more videos like this for free? Then please subscribe and click on the like button. As part of an organization's strategy, to communicate the complete value, of what it offers to employees, which of the following, is the most effective option? A compensation and benefits manager should select a make the salary structure salary ranges and salary grades public and accessible to all employees b communicate the higher percentage of health insurance costs that the employer shoulders c provide detailed messages to employees on the benchmarking process of determining equitable compensation d provide a customized hidden paycheck to employees The answer is D. The hidden paycheck is made up of benefits that don't necessarily show up on a paycheck stub. Hidden paychecks provide a more complete picture of how much an employer spends on employee salaries, wages, and benefits. Hidden paychecks include hidden costs such as overtime pay, social security payments, unemployment insurance payments, workers' compensation, health benefits, sick and vacation days, 
tuition reimbursements, 401k matches, disability insurance, workers' compensation, etc. Hidden paychecks provide an individualized, total compensation statements that shows the total value of an individual's compensation and benefits package. Which of the following is not a part of the CSR maturity curve? A. Governance. B. Compliance. C. Transformation. D. Integration. The answer is A. The Corporate Social Responsibility CSR, maturity curve details how organizations move from 1. Compliance, 2. To integration, 3. To transformation. Compliance in CSR maturity curve. In the compliance stage, organizations assume a defensive posture and seize social responsibility as a reluctant cost of doing business. Integration in CSR Maturity Curve In the integration stage, CSR is integrated into the regular functioning of the business. Transformation in CSR Maturity Curve In the transformation stage, an organization has redefined itself and its brand to reflect a commitment to CSR. A conglomerate exports its products to foreign countries where it establishes production facilities. However, its products, procedures, unique business processes, and strategy are developed in the home country. With regard to the Bartlett and Gashal's typology of multinational companies, this conglomerate is practicing a strategy a multi domestic, b international, c transnational, d global. The answer is B. International firms export their products or services to foreign countries and are referred to as practicing an exporting strategy. The international strategy has little need for local adaptation and global integration. Products are produced in the company's home country and sent to customers all over the world. Where there are subsidiaries, if any, these subsidiaries serve the purpose of local channels through which the products are sold to the end consumer. Large wine producers, from France and Italy, are good examples of companies with an international business strategy. Global Corporate Strategies Global Strategy Treats the world as a single global market. Standardizes global products and advertising strategies. Transnational Strategy Seeks to balance global efficiencies and local responsiveness. Combines standardization and customization for product and advertising strategies. Export or international strategy. Domestically focused. Exports a few domestically produced products to selected countries. Multi-domestic strategy. Handles markets independently for each country. Adapts products and advertising to local tastes and needs. Have you subscribed to this channel? Please do. Would you like to see more videos like this for free? Then please subscribe and click on the like button. Also check out the exam resources in the description box below. At the end of a training class, on conducting research, on consumer preferences in detergent brands, a training participant is asked to produce a consumer research plan, for a popular detergent brand. Which of the following levels of learning, is the employee being asked to demonstrate? A. Comprehension B. Synthesis C. Knowledge D. Analysis The answer is B. The training participant is being asked to produce, create, or synthesize a solution, to a consumer research plan. At the knowledge level, the learner might be required, to name a subject mentioned in the training. At the comprehension level, the learner might be asked to explain why a particular resource was used in a scenario. At the analysis level, the learner might be asked to identify research process steps in a scenario. Bloom's Taxonomy 6 Levels of Learning Knowledge Level Recall of Information Discovery, Observation, Listing, Locating, Naming Comprehension Level Understanding, Translating, Summarizing, Demonstrating, 
Discussing Application level Using and applying knowledge, using problem-solving methods, manipulating, designing, experimenting Analysis level Identifying and analyzing patterns, organization of ideas, recognizing trends. Synthesis levels. Using old concepts to create new ideas, design and invention, composing, imagining, inferring, modifying, predicting, combining. Evaluation levels. Comparison of ideas, evaluating outcomes, solving, judging, recommending, rating. The Three Tree Landscaping Firm is aiming to hire a handful of qualified staff and has posted openings that offer pay ranges that exceed the industry average. This is in a bid to develop an operative workforce as quick as possible. The Three Tree Firm is most likely in what phase of its organizational life cycle? A. Introduction B. Growth C. Maturity D. Decline The answer is A. The Three Tree Firm is most likely in the introduction phase and is willing to pay more to recruit a talented and already trained workforce. The founder could also decide to outsource specialized tasks. An organization that is in a growth stage will have an improved financial standing, increased division of labor, will add new positions, but may not exceed the industry pay range. An organization at maturity will feature consistent business results and financial predictability. The board is more policy and strategy focused, there is an established culture, and there is an emphasis on efficiency and systems. An organization in decline finds it difficult to respond to change, experiences high turnover, and seeks to shrink the workforce through attrition and layoffs. Have you subscribed to this channel? Please do. Would you like to see more videos like this for free? Then please subscribe and click on the like button. The team company engages in a robust organizational socialization program. The company's program would most likely apply to employees who get promoted and those who are a part of a succession plan, b identified as high potential employees, c changing career paths, d working in line units that directly advance the company? The answer is C. Organizational socialization, think of onboarding, is defined as a learning and adjustment process that enables an individual to assume an organizational role that fits both organizational and individual needs. It occurs when an individual assumes a new or changing role within an organization. New employees, employees getting promoted, and those who are changing career paths, such as lateral transfers, are most likely to participate in the organizational socialization program. Difference between onboarding and orientation Onboarding Employee focuses on specific role in his or her department. The duration is ongoing. The content is specific to each employee. The outcome is to get new employees ready to be productive. Orientation. The general focus is the employee's role at the company. The duration is a one-time event. The setup is classroom or online. The content provides a general overview of the job. The outcome is to get new employees ready to start working and ready to take job-specific training. Become a Human Resource Prep Member Membership Perks Unlimited PHR, SPHR, SHRMCP, SHRMSCP questions, answers, and explanations. In-depth explanations of key terms and concepts for the SHRMCP, SHRMSCP, PHR, SPHR exams. Instructional videos on exam resources for the SHRMCP, SHRMSCP, PHR, SPHR exams. What action should HR take to validate that training goals support the overall strategy? A. Set training goals that target the unit objectives of the company. B. Measure results of the training needs analysis to make certain all sequential steps were achieved. C. 
review training analytics, with training managers, and process owners, for context. D. Create a value driver tree, to determine a line of sight to the strategy. The answer is D. A value driver tree is used to map enterprise level goals, to the functional, or departmental level goals. Completing an assessment using a value driver tree, would validate whether or not there is a line of sight, also called sight line, in training goals. Line of sight means that employees can see the connection, between their tasks, and the organization's strategic goals. This ensures that employee efforts, help to achieve the strategic goals. Remember, strategy is done at the executive level, it is interdepartmental, it is long-term, and it is cascaded down to departments and units. Value Driver Tree, in Pictures Which is most likely to occur in a company with a geocentric approach to globalization? A. Headquarters policies are modified for local application, only when it is required by local laws. B. Important cultural differences are emphasized over headquarters policies, which are adjusted for local application. C. Individual regions are given full autonomy, in the development of a compensation strategy. D. Local cultural and legal compensation norms, are taken into account, in the administration of a cohesive global strategy. The answer is D. In a geocentric organization, an international company is seen as a single global business, with management talent coming from any location in the enterprise. The strategic plan is global in orientation, while the need to balance global strategy, with local cultures and regulations, is understood. Option A, refers to the ethnocentric model, Option C, refers to a regiocentric model. Have you subscribed to this channel? Please do. Would you like to see more videos like this for free? Then please subscribe and click on the like button. Which of the following options, represents a threat to the competitive strategy, of a small corner store? A. A convenience store has just opened on the next block. B. The county recently imposed a 0.07% county charge, on all convenience and corner stores. C. An increase in the digital footprint amongst residents, where the store is located. D. A grocery store that caters to the Cuban community, intends to open a branch store, a mile away from the corner store. The answer is A. A threat to the business of the small corner store, will be a similar business opening its doors nearby. Note that option A is much closer in terms of proximity, than option D. Also, option D appeals specifically to the Cuban community. The county charge applies to all similar competitors. A new director has arrived to manage a HR department, that became dysfunctional under the previous director. What should the new director do first? A. Meet individually with all employees, and clarify her expectations for their performance, and interactions. B. Assemble the entire department, and describe the engagement levels, that are required for a functional department. C. Talk to members of the department separately, to understand the needs of the department. D. Detail internal customer service metrics, and measures, to be met by the teams. The answer is C. The first step is often a needs analysis, what is needed. While the most important step, is obtaining senior management's approval. Since the HR director is new to the department, she needs to first learn about the employee's needs individually, and as a group. She can then provide, the type of leadership the group needs. It is important to begin with a needs assessment, i.e. what is and what should be, determine the gap between current realities, and desired results. Before proffering a solution. When conducting employment interviews, an employer may a. ask disability-related questions, and conduct medical examinations, as long as it does so for all individuals, entering the same job category b. ask disability-related questions, only if doing so is job-related, and consistent with business necessity c. not ask questions about disability, or require medical examinations d. 
may ask disability related questions, but not conduct medical examinations, as long as the questions fall under the bona fide occupational qualification BFOQ, category. The answer is C. When hiring, an employer may not ask questions about disability, or require medical examinations, until after it makes a conditional job offer to the applicant. Option A applies after making the job offer, but before the person starts working, an employer may ask disability-related questions and conduct medical examinations, as long as it does so for all individuals, entering the same job category. Option B applies only to employees. An employer may ask questions about disability or require medical examinations, only if doing so is job-related, and consistent with business necessity. Thus, for example, an employer could request medical information, when it has a reasonable belief, based on objective evidence, that a particular employee will be unable to perform essential job functions, or will pose a direct threat, because of a medical condition. Become a Human Resource Prep Member Membership Perks Unlimited PHR, SPHR, SHRMCP, SHRMSCP Questions, Answers, and Explanations In-depth explanations of key terms and concepts for the SHRMCP, SHRMSCP, PHR, SPHR exams Instructional videos on exam resources for the SHRMCP, SHRMSCP, PHR SPHR exams. Kate is involved in a virtual, international, business negotiation. If the culture of the country she is negotiating with, has a universalistic culture, which of the following, will be good advice for Kate to follow? A. Be ready to make spur-of-the-moment decisions. B. Give specific instructions, and ground rules, at the beginning of the business negotiation. C. Be boisterous in greetings, and enthusiastic in responses. D. Refrain from showing excessive emotions. The answer is B. Cultures based on universalism, favor formal rules, and clear, precise, specific instructions. The focus is more on the rules, than the relationship. Universalist cultures include Canada, the US, the UK, and Australia. In what culture, is a verbal agreement or handshake, likely to be better received than a formal contract? A. Outer directed. B. Particularist. C. Universalist. D. Ascriptive. The answer is B. Particularism is the belief that circumstances dictate how ideas, and practices, should be applied, i.e., relationships over rules. Universalism is the belief that ideas and practices, can be applied everywhere without modification, i.e., rules over relationships. Let's look at the model in pictures. Universalism versus particularism, what is more important, rules or relationships? Individualism versus collectivism, do we function in group or as individuals? Neutral versus emotional, do we display our emotions? Specific versus diffuse, how separate we keep our private and working lives? Achievement versus ascription, do we have to prove ourselves to receive status, or is it given to us? Sequential versus synchronic, do we do things one at a time, or several things at once? Internal control versus external control. Do we control our environment, or are we controlled by it? We offer a standardized online course for the PHR and SPHR. PHR SPHR Self-Study Course on Teachable.com The course includes basic, intermediate, and advanced resources designed to enable you earn the PHR and SPHR exams, with over a thousand standard questions. Check out the link in the description box below. And with that we come to the end of today's lesson. Check out the description box below for additional resources towards earning the PHR, SPHR, SHRMCP, and SHRMSCP. Facebook Practice Group
class marker PHR, SPHR, practice exams, books on Amazon, teachable PHR, SPHR online course. Remember to subscribe and like this video.